Hi everyone, welcome to Global AI Summit. I'm Dr. Abhilasha Vyas, and today I'm delivering a session on Microsoft Intra ID Protection. We will try to understand that how Microsoft Intra ID Protection is helping us in mitigating the risk, uh, specifically using machine learning techniques. So Microsoft Intra ID protection uh, helps the organizations uh, to detect, investigate, and remediate identity-based risk. And these identity-based risk uh, can be, I can say that, further led into the tools like conditional access to make uh, access decisions that we need to give access to the user or not because this user is on high risk or medium risk, or we can uh, fit this information or ingest these data into the solution like SIM as well for the further <laughs> investigation and the correction. So before starting uh, to this topic, a little bit about me. So I'm working with CloudDat as a business unit head for cloud security and business intelligence. I'm very passionate in delivering sessions. Uh, whatever knowledge I have, I want to share with community. And uh, I receive a uh, certain recognition as well from the communities. And uh, I have clear couple of certifications to understand more about the security services which Microsoft is having, which help the organizations to protect their resources, protect their users, protect the access, protect the applications. So all those parts. So let's start with the topic now. So this is the agenda for today. Yeah, so this is the agenda for today. We will be first reviewing the identity protection basics. Then we will be understanding that how we can implement and manage user risk policy and how we can implement the MFA registration policy, why it is important, how we can monitor and investigate and remediate the elevated risky users. So this is what we have for today's agenda. Let's deep dive into the topic. Let's start uh, with reviewing that what is uh, identity protection, what we do in identity protection, and what kind of uh, control or power we have with the service. So as I discussed earlier, uh, Microsoft identity protection is helping the organization in majorly three areas, detection, investigation, and the remediation. And all these are based on the identity risks which we have. Now, as we discussed that we can feed in these uh, data into the conditional access policies to manage the access, and also we can feed in the data to the solutions like SIM as well for the further investigation. Now, what kind of risks we are detecting? So Microsoft is continually adding and updating the detections in the catalog uh, to protect the organization, like uh, the behavior which we have for the uh, risky behavior which we can consider like the anonymous IP address range or password spray attacks or the leak credentials. So during each sign-in, the identity protection runs all real-time sign-in detections, generating a sign-in session risk level and indicating that how likely the sign-in is compromised. So this is happening in the real-time only. And based on this risk level, the policies are then applied to protect the users and the organization. So I will show you that how we can uh, uh, fit this information in the conditional access as well, how we can manage the access with the help of the uh, identity protection risk implementation also. When we say that after detection, we want to investigate the things. So for investigation, uh, any risk which we are detecting, uh, is identify and uh, it is tracked with the reporting. So in that, we are getting three key reports and I'll show you the reports as well, even though I have a demo environment, so I'm not having uh, much data, but I can show you the uh, parameters based on which that report is generated. So majorly uh, three reports which we are getting that is risk detection. So each risk uh, detected is reported uh, as a risk detection. We have risky sign-ins. So risky sign-in, when we say that is reported, whenever there are one or more risk detections reported for that sign-in. In that case, that is added in the risky sign-in report. 
we have risky users. So when we say that risky user is reported, so when either or both of the following are true. Now, what are the following things which I'm going to share right now is that the user has one or more risky sign-ins or the user is having one or more risk detection that are reported. So these are the two things which are making the user coming in the risky user report. Now, once you detect, you uh, investigate, now we have to remediate that. So we have to understand that when we are doing the detection and the investigation, we have to remediate the risk. So in that case, we have the option that we want to use for the automation. Because we know that automation is very, very critical to the security. We always have to understand that human is a weakest link in the security. So we can't put it in the hand of the human completely. We have to automate the remediation. So we can enable the conditional access policy as we discussed, where uh, we need a access control such as we can ask for a strong authentication method or we can ask user to perform a multi-factor authentication or we can perform a, a password reset activity also for the users those who are coming in the risky or the sign-ins are risky so if the user is successfully complete the access control then the risk is automatically remediated and yes we have the manual remediation process also so these are the three things which are important to understand when we say the basics of the identity protection so these are the three things which we just discussed now that automating the detection and remediation of the identity based risk. We are investigating the risk using the data in the Microsoft intra admin center and also we are exporting the risk detection data to third party utilities for the further analysis. So as we discussed that identity protection using the knowledge which Microsoft is having and gain from its position in the organization with Microsoft Inter ID and the consumer space with Microsoft accounts. So Microsoft is analyzing around 6.5 trillion signals per day to identify and protect users from the threats and the signals which are generated by and padded into identity protection. We can again uh, used in different tools with different investigation. So but the major thing which we need to take out is that we have to have Microsoft Intra IDP2 license for identity protection in many cases. So we will be discussing that in detail in the upcoming slide. So let's have a discussion on three aspects which we just have discussed on the basics uh, of this particular topic part. So the first is risk detection, remediation and the investigation. So these are the common risk detected and remediated. We have anonymous IP address or atypical travel. So for example, like uh, you are accessing from the Tor browser, you are using anonymizer via VPN. So these are the things if you are using, it will be detected as a common risk. So this is all happening with the help of internal programs and algorithms which are designed. We are not detecting it manually. So then we have atypical travel. You are signing uh, from atypical location based on the user's recent sign in. Like I'm signing in, let's say from today, Bangalore. Now, after a few seconds, you see a new sign in coming from a different country. So that, that is kind of an atypical travel, which is not possible. We have malware linked IPs where uh, the sign in in from the malware link IP addresses. We have unfamiliar sign in properties where uh, we have not seen that kind of pattern from the user. Like you are signing in from the new location or you are signing in, in a different time zone. So that is also considered as a risk. So we are creating a flag for all such cases because uh, Microsoft is completely uh, uh, working on a zero trust policy where every signal every access is considered as a it is coming for a some kind of attack or it is having a malicious intention so when we have such kind of uh, approach we always try to make sure that we are secure from every request which is coming for any kind of signal or any kind of access then we have leak credentials so this particular risk is detected and 
it is indicating that the user's valid credentials have been leaked. And you are seeing those leak credentials in some databases. We have password spray also, like which indicates that multiple usernames are being attacked using the common password in a unified brute force manner. So that is also considered as a risk. And uh, we have intra threat intelligence also, where uh, we have sources uh, of the Microsoft internal and external threat intelligence, which are helping us in identifying the known attack patterns. And also a new country uh, is there. So that is also discovered and identified. So these are the risks which are detected and these are the risks which are identified. So any activity or any kind of suspicious inbox forwarding if you are doing, so that is also coming. So these risk signals can trigger the remediate efforts. Like we can have, as I discussed earlier also, that we can ask user to perform the multi-factor intra intra multi-factor authentication. We can ask them to reset their password using the self-service password reset. If you have enabled that, we can block the uh, user until the administrative uh, authority can take any action. And we have risky labels as well in the identity protection. Because based on these risky labels, we can automate the uh, process of the remediation. So these are the three risks, low, medium, and high. So when I'll be giving a demo, I will demonstrate as well that how these uh, users will be assigned for the low risk or the medium risk. So we don't have that specific information that that risk, how this is calculated by the Microsoft, but uh, every level is having a different kind of a confidence that the user is uh, or the sign-in is compromised. Like for example, uh, let's say we take one incident uh, that's a unfamiliar sign-in properties. So what happened is a user uh, is threatening uh, as a leak credentials for the another user or something like that. That can also be considered. So every level we have to understand that represents a higher uh, sign that okay this is a uh, higher chances of the user coming in the risk or this is a, uh, a sign in risk to switch coming so that kind of thing we can manage and we can assign it so if you see the slide which is showing the licensing for the identity protection so here if you see in the first column we have capability then we have microsoft intra id free or microsoft 365 app what kind of features you have with this license? What features you have with uh, premium P1 license? What features you have for P2 license? So Microsoft Intra uh, Identity Protection requires a Intra ID P2 license, but we have some limited security reporting is also available that is free of charge in Microsoft Intra ID. M365 and the Microsoft Intra ID P1 license. So this is what is mentioned in the uh, slide, if you see that. So user sign-in risk policy uh, via identity uh, protection is not available in Intra ID pre uh, license. Uh, this is also not available, but if you see the P2 license, it is having all yes. When you see that risk reports which are coming, as I discussed the three reports we are getting, risky users, risky sign-ins, risk detection. So in these three type of reports, if you see that uh, some uh, licenses are giving limited information. So when we say risky users, Microsoft Intra ID, free or M365 limited information. So only users with medium or high risk are shown. So no details are given for the uh, low risky users and you don't have any risk history or something like that as well. And if we say that P1 license, that is limited information means only users again with medium or high risk are shown. When we say risky sign in limited information, it means there is no risk detail or risk level issue. Only the report is coming with the risky sign. -in. If we say for P1, again, the same thing that you have a risk detail or risk level. When we say risk detection, limited information for P1, that there is no details drawn, which is given over there. So that is the thing we have with uh, licensing for identity protection. So if we go deep dive and we see that what all permissions, uh, uh, I think the users are requiring, uh, 
so users need to be security reader user need to be security operator or security administrator or global reader or global admin to access the identity protection so here if you see the roles are mentioned and we have mentioned that what this role can do what this role can not do so if you see the global admin is having full access to identity protection and uh, can do everything so the demo account which i have created i am the global admin for that particular tnet so i have full access to the uh, actions which i can do or the permissions full permissions i have security admin is again having a full access but a uh, security user will not be able to reset the password for the user so these are the few things which we have uh, on this but for this we need to have a p2 license which we need to always remember then how we can implement and manage user risk policy so let me bring you the give me a second to bring the screen for all of you yeah so this is a microsoft portal so i have logged in with the user account let me share another screen with you this is a user screen let me come with the role yeah so this is yeah now i think i'll be able to perform this so if you see this this is a portal where we will be working let me sign out from this and let me sign in with the admin account okay perfect yeah so here if you come to this portal now you can look for microsoft intra id protection we have all these users we have the list of the users available and i want to protect all these users from various kind of risks and i want to protect them i can go to identity protection i can look for the service if you come to this particular dashboard you will get the information and that is very very exciting information that the number of attacks which are blocked in past 12 months you will be getting that in this particular dashboard you can select the certain attack and you can use it this is a demo which i have created just for this uh, today's session if you see the number of users which are protected you can see that the mean time to remediate the user risk the number of high user risk all those things we have over here and we can also export this dashboard we can share this dashboard as well let me take you to the overview page so in the overview page if you see these are the things which are coming i can also see the identity score which is calculated so i can see that secure score for identity it is uh, when it is updated now here you will get the comparison also based on the different uh, companies which are using it you can see the trend as well and you can see the improvement actions as well which we can take to manage our infrastructure and to manage the secure score of the identities i can see all user risk levels and i can configure the user risk policies so this is the overview page where we can work on that and here i can attach with the conditional access policies as i discussed so we have user risk policy so i can implement the user risk from this particular place i can also create a sign in risk policies and i i can also work on the multi factor authentication registration policy so let me take you back to there and here the the point i discussed that we will be getting three important reports that is risky users risky sign ins and risky detection and all it is happening automatically with the help of the automated methods which are there let me share my screen once again yeah 
and we are here once again. So now we will be first understanding that how we can implement and manage the user risk policy. So here we can uh, have sign in risk policies and user risk policies enabled for users to automatically respond to the risk detection and also allow user to self remediate. So here we have this admin, we reach to the center, we have seen that how we can work on that. So organizations must decide the level of risk because every organization is having different level of capacity of taking the risk. So that, that we need to work on the organization level. We can also implement the MFA registration policy. So what is that is, now we see that the breaches which are happening. So we are giving a one extra layer of security in terms of giving multi-factor authentication. So where we are asking users to go for a various ways of uh, authentication. So here, this Microsoft Intra multi-factor authentication, it provides a way to verify that uh, you are using more than just a username and password, and you are using OTP or whatever registration registered method you have for the authentication. And also it provides a second layer, as I discussed with you, and a user will be able to respond to the MFA prompt, and they have to register for this. And why it is recommended from the Microsoft is that it delivers a strong authentication through a range of verification products and the options which are there. We can use, I'll just show you the things as well, which we have. We can use video to security keys. We can use Microsoft Authenticator app. So this particular thing uh, play a major role when you are preparing your organization to have the capacity to self-remediate the risk and the detections in the identity protection. So we will see this also uh, in the demo live that how we can work on that and then we will monitor the thing. So let me take my screen back and uh, let me share the portal once again with you all. So I'm switching between the portals. Let me share this with you. Yeah, so this is the portal where we were discussing earlier. Let me show you the authentication methods which we have. So here we are not having any manual intervention. Everything is managed with the help of the algorithms which are designed. Uh, let me show you this. So if you see these authentication methods, these are the authentication methods which we can use. Uh, to give as an option to the users, FIDO2 security keys, authenticator, SMS, temporary access pass, so all these things the user can use to enable MFA. Whatever your organization allows or your organization is taking, we can even go and work on the uh, password protection as well. Like when we talk about identity protection, it is automatically in real time checking that if user is resetting the password or if user is adding a new password, that is coming under your uh, policy or compliance or not. So I can also give a banned password list, which are the commonly used password like admin, admin, default, uh, one, two, three, four. So these are the common passwords which we see generally that the users are using. We can ban those passwords. And I think around thousand words we can use over here. Yeah, we can use up to thousand words in this particular banned password list where uh, uh, we can have those commonly used passwords. So that is also helping us in preventing from the different kind of attacks which happen with the help of the password. So, uh, and we can also have a lockout, smart smart lockouts, like after 10 of failed sign-ins, user will be logged out for these many seconds. So that also we can configure and manage. So that's not part of the discussion today, but I've just added it because it's coming over here. Let me take you back to the identity protection and then we will see in the conditional access policy also how it is enabled and all these processes automated, managed. So I'm not going and checking that my user are at risk or not. It is automatically showing me the reports in back end. It is checking the sign-ins and all. So first we'll let's see the user risk key policy. So here this is a user 
remediation policy. So what we are doing is we are selecting the users. Now, here also the question is, who all will be coming under the high risk? Who all will be coming under the low risk or medium risk? It completely depends upon the organization, the roles you have given to the users. How a, a user is uh, accessible to these kind of uh, sensitive information of your organization. So all those things uh, you need to consider when you are designing the risky policy for the user. Those who are at the high risk, those who are at the medium risk, and so on. So here I've selected these two users, Edelwens. So I can select it for all users as well, and I can go for individual users as well. So let's say I'm selecting it for these two users. Okay. Now, if you see, we have exclude option as well. So why this exclude is given over here? Because let's say some users are always traveling or some users like admin, you want to exclude them from such kind of policy. So those users can be part of the exclude. And the user, those who want to cover in this particular policy, that will be coming under the include section. Now here you can select the risk level of the user, that user it at the high risk, medium risk, or the low risk. And also we can check that if the user is, as I mentioned to you that, we are completely removing the manual uh, intervention. We are automating the process of remediation. So in that case, if we see the controls, so here we have the control that we can ask that user to go for a password change. So here we have two options that I trust this user and I can allow this user to access, but that user needs to change the password or I'm not trusting anything. I'm just blocking the access to save my environment. So it's completely us up to us that how we want to manage this policy. Now here also, if you see two options are given, the post policy enforcement is enabled or disabled. Now in this case, if I'm disabling it, it means I've created it, but I haven't enabled it. But I'm just enabling this policy. So as I've already created it, it's already enabled. So I'm not changing anything. Similar to that, we can also create a sign-in risk policies. So in the sign-in risk policy, if we see, again, we have to select the users for which we want to keep track of the sign-ins and for which we want to identify the risky sign-ins which are coming based on the various pointers which I discussed with you. So again, here we can have all users coming under this policy or we can select the specific individuals uh, for which we want to have the reports for which we want to understand the behavior. And again, Microsoft is uh, really amazing in giving such kind of facilities that it's very, very flexible. So we can include and exclude the users based on the requirement and based on the nature of the work. Now here again, we have three levels. We have high, medium and low risk, so we can manage it. And also we have access. So in that case, uh, we have two options, blocking the access and requiring the MFA. Now, let me tell you this, that why we have these options available, because sometimes it happens that users are in the sign-in risk, but we can't block the access based on the designated job, based on the nature of the job, based on the role that user is performing. We can't completely block the access, but we have to make sure that the environment is safe, the identity is safe. In that case, uh, for user risk policy, we will be asking the users to change the password. And in case of sign in risk policy, we are allowing the access, but we are asking them to come through the MFA. In addition to the password, we are asking them to use the multiple factor of authentication for showing that it is a right identity and it is an authenticated identity trying to access the environment. And again, we can enable and disable the policy. This is how we can implement user risk policy and the sign in risk policy and our job is done. Now it's up to the algorithms. It's up to the Microsoft how in backend it is calculated based on the sign ins we have based on the logs we are generating uh, from the various users the type of resources they are accessing, the location they are accessing, they're using the net, which device they are using. So all those parameters are there. And also we have a 
multi-factor authentication registration policy. So if you see this registration policy, it is recommended that every user in the organization should go with this policy. This will also help us in completely uh, making sure that the user and identities are safe from the common password based attacks. So here we can assign it for all the users or we can assign it for a, a specified user as well based on the policies we are creating for the risk. So I'm not enabling it right now for all the users. We can enable it for all the users in one go. And then we have the reports. Now, before showing these reports, let me take you to the reports which we have based on the sign-ins and audits. So here in intra ID, if you see, we have a monitoring option where automatically the logs are generated. If you see the sign-in logs which are coming over here, so these are the signing logs which are generated based on the activities I am performing. Now here I can, if I'll just open this, it is showing me the information, the basic information, the location. Now if you see the basic information, what is the request ID? What is the authentication method used? What is the status? Username, user, uh, sign in identifier, all those information which are we think as a basic information for the user is coming over here. We can also have location from which location I'm logging in right now that is coming. What is the device I'm using right now? What are the authentication details I have? So I can show these authentication uh, things as well. And if I have enabled any conditional access policy, and if any policies for report only mode. So if you see all these kind of information, Microsoft is collecting with the help of the monitoring logs and giving to us. And based on these logs only, the sign-in policies and the user risk policies are working in backend and giving us the reports and detecting the risky behavior of the users, the patterns which is created. We have the audit logs as well. What all activity that user is performing? So I can see these kind of information as well, that the user is doing a group management, role management. So all those activities which users are doing, every user that is listed over here. I can again have option to download these reports and I can investigate it myself, or I can ask identity protection to investigate it for me so that I can identify that the user is at the risk or the sign in in it. So that we can identify. I hope that this gives you a brief that how this sign-in policies are getting the data. It's getting the data from these logs which are created. I can take you back to the identity protection. And these are the reports which are created. The risky sign-in, I'm very happy that this demo account is not having any risky user. So I can have a lot many filters to work with. So right now the risky level is high in I can apply it for all. I will get the details for all the labels which I have. I can again add the various filters as well in this. Like user, based on the users, based on the username. So we have lot many flexibility to work on our reports. When we talk that we have uh, the facility to work on the risk policies. Then we have risky sign-ins as well. It's just checking that it's coming or not. So the this this particular uh, feature is helping us in giving the reports for the risky signings. Again, you can download, you can investigate. And if you have any third party tool where you want to have a one more level of investigation, you can export the data settings as well. And you can have this. And again, we need to have a Azure subscription. For this, we can export this data as well. And the risk detections. So these are the three reports we have, uh, which we can work and investigate. Let me bring my slide back to you all.
so we were discussing about monitoring investigating and remediating risk so this is the kind of a report is generated which you can see over here which we have seen just right now in the report but i don't have the data to show you because this is a account which i have created for this presentation only so every report is having all the detections uh, and the period and everything is shown in this report if you check the these this is the example of the risky users what all users are at risk uh, or have had rem risk remediated or have had risk dismissed all the details about the detection history of all risky sign ins are coming the user now in this if you see we have certain actions which can be performed like reset the user password we can confirm the user compromise we can dismiss the user risk we can block the user from signing in if you are thinking that still we are not coming out from the risk we can investigate it further using the azure advanced threat protection as well and if we talk about the risky sign in which is not in this uh, example i was not able to take that so risky sign in are again classified as risk compromised or confirmed or risk at the confirmed stage or risk is dismissed or remediated all these points similar to this is also coming when we talk about the risky sign in reports and then we can have the actions like we can confirm the sign in we can compromise or confirm sign in say now these are the following options which administrators are having like uh, you can self remediate with risk policy you can have mutual password reset manual password reset you can dismiss the user risk means we can allow users to self remediate with microsoft infra multi factor authentication and self service password reset it is not by default enable we have to enable this uh, to make sure that we are giving the power to the admins to manage the risk at their level itself so in the risk policy we can unlock the users where we want to make them uh, working on certain things so identity protection as we discussed is uh, helping us in automatically remediating the this and uh, identity protection is used in expanding the tools to uh, other services as well so as i was discussing about this so let me take you to the portal once again and i'll show you that how conditional access policy we can enable for this uh, risky things let me bring my screen back and then we will understand this so this is the portal where we were working let me open the cap from the intro id let me take you to the security portal here we go conditional access again for conditional access you should be having license let me open this new policy if you are coming here when you are creating a new policy you can select the user let me close this we can select the target resources here if you see we can select the conditions uh based on which you will be controlling the access and these conditions are user risk this condition is sign in risk device platforms locations client applications and you have any filters for the devices so if we talk about user risk you can have this conditional access policy enabled for the users those who are at the high risk level so i can configure this and i can select that all the user those who are coming under the high user risk policy they will be coming under this particular cap now and this policy is uh, there when the user is signing in or requesting any access this will be also checked Uh, for giving the access so this is how we can use the identity protection for such conditions if we see the sign in risk we can also enable the sign in risk 
and it is going to be generated based on the real time risk detection. I can again select the things like high, medium, low and user at no risk. So I can create such kind of uh, integration with the control access, a conditional access policy as well. So these are the things which I wanted to share with you all uh, uh, in the today's session. Let me bring my thank you slide for all of you uh, for patiently uh, attending this session. I know there are a lot more which we can discuss, but uh, given a time duration, I thought that I'll give you a brief overview about the things which we have for uh, Microsoft Identity Protection. And uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. This is a QR code which I have added in the slide. Uh, so uh, feel free to reach out to me and uh, I'll really uh, be feeling open for all of you where you need any help in your learning uh, journey. So thank you so much once again. Take care and uh, happy learning. Thank you so much Global AI Summit team uh, to invite me for delivering this live session and accepting my uh, proposal for the talk. Thank you Pratap and entire team. Thank you so much.